our fifth inductee. In college, Jasmina Parazic led the University of Maryland to the 1982 Women's Final Four and a final ranking of number three, which was the Terps' highest ranking ever at that time. She was a 1983 Kodak All-American and the Co-ACC Tournament MVP. All four of her Maryland teams made it to at least the Elite Eight in the NCAA Tournament and finished eighth or higher in the final poll. Her jersey is retired at the University of Maryland and she ranks in the top 10 all-time in scoring for the Terrapins. Parazic is a member of the ACC Silver Anniversary Team and the 50th ACC Anniversary Team. She was a two-time member of the Yugoslavian Olympic Team leading them to the bronze medal in 1980. She also led Yugoslavia to the 1987 World University Games gold medal. Ladies and gentlemen, 2014 Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, Jasmina Parazic. in just a little bit. I know it's not like a couple of pieces we heard earlier. But what's gonna happen if I touch the mic? Oh, nothing happened. <laughs> they, they scared us earlier. Um, I thought Miss Dunn was the only one who didn't get the memo on the length of this speech. Tur <laughs> Turns out it is not so. Hey, um, guys, I know you will agree with me on this one thing. There's one way we can get a woman to be the president of the United States very soon in the next elections. Miss uh, Lynn Dunn over here, that speech was so good, you have to run for office. <laughs> so 48 hours ago, I started to panic. And I'm not even a panicky type at all. I'm always usually calm. So I started to panic about this whole thing. Well, no, not the whole thing, just about what I'm going to wear. <laughs> so, but then calmness comes over me because I realized there are three Hall of Famers from the University of Maryland. I have my coach, Chris Weller, Vicki Bullitt, another player, and our first inductee, Tara Heiss. So surely they can give me some great advice. So I decided to call my coach, Ms. Weller, and she was the first one to call, but she's enjoying her retirement so much. And she's traveling to these places that definitely don't have any cell towers, but really places that none of us could pronounce the name of. Somehow, she finally gets back to me, and she's like, Jazz, what's wrong? And I'm like, Miss Swaller, I have nothing to wear. Oh, you'll be fine, Miss, you'll, you'll be fine. Jazz, I have to run, I have to go. Thank you, Miss Swaller. <laughs> But that's all right, don't worry. So I get Vicki Bullet. So I call Vicki Bullet. She was only inducted two years ago. She surely remembers everything. So I call her, I leave her a message, please Vicki call me back. I didn't leave, I didn't tell her why I was calling. So she calls me back within 45 seconds. I guess she kind of sensed the urgency in my voice. And she's, Jazz, what is wrong? And I'm like, well, it's nothing really wrong, wrong. It's just that I just have nothing to wear. And she is like, Jazz, listen, this is what you do. Well, this is what you don't want to do. Do not, no matter what, do not bring 10 outfits with you. You must only pick three, bring three, and you will be fine. And I'm like, Vicky, if I had 10 outfits to wear, I don't think I would be giving you this call right now. <laughs> but that's all right. That was good, too. So then, surely I should have called. Tara Heiss. Tara Heiss is a point guard, the brains. You know how point guards always think they're smarter than everybody else? <laughs> I should have called her first. That was a mistake. So I called Tara, and I'm like, Tara. And she called me back, but usually she, oh, I, I, I'm not even going to go into this. She does not call back. When you call her today, she calls you back in year 2015. 
So, but she knew this was happening, so she actually called me back. And I'm like, Tara, I have nothing to wear. What am I going to do? She says, Jazz, what are you going to say? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I <laughs> have not really thought about this. So I said, but Tara, I really have nothing to wear. You must help me out. What did you wear? Oh, never mind what I wore. You don't want to go by that. What are you going to say? I said, well, what? I don't know. She goes, have you thought about it? I mean, you're representing Maryland, University of Maryland, all of us. What are you going to say? I said, well, Tara, what did you say? She says, I just spoke from my heart. Just spoke from my heart. And the way she said that, that was really beautiful. I was thinking, maybe I could do that, you know? <laughs> and Tara, just like, speak from your heart. But I'm like, Tara, it's, it's I, I don't even, I didn't prepare anything, and you know things will go wrong as they're going right now. <laughs> because thank God that Coach Dunn, Miss Dunn, told us that you have to have a backup plan if things go wrong. And I told her, I told her I'd probably go into Serbian language because <laughs> nobody will know. There are no Serbian people here, right? Please tell me that is so. Guys, so, but anyway, so I have really, I, I had like a really hard time finding what to wear. Now I got to explain to you something about this music, about Johann Strauss's On the Blue Danube, on the beautiful Blue Danube. My hometown of Novi Sad is on the Blue Danube. And really, one of the main reasons is it's a beautiful, beautiful city, charming city, about the size of Knoxville. Um, 14th century fortress on one side, beautiful cathedral on one side. It's just really something to see. And when the sun shines on the river, it really is blue. And another reason, now I'm going to go a little bit deep, philosophical for a moment. Oh, guys, I have to go back to Tara. This is what, what happened. Just remember. So Tara says to me, Jazz, the most amazing thing about you and now I'm thinking she's trying to give me an idea of what to say. And she says, Jazz, the most amazing thing about you is, and I'm like now totally quiet listening, because I'm picturing her about to say something like, I had the best, you have the best jump shot I have ever seen, your moves, it was unbelievable. I'm just so quiet, waiting, really feeling good about myself. And Tara says to me, but Jazz, you know, you came here, you didn't know anybody, you didn't know anything, you didn't even speak English. And Jazz, you actually finally graduated. <laughs> so, do you see why I forgot that? Because I was trying to forget that she actually said that. But thank you, Tara Heiss. That was really helpful. So, back to the Blue Danube. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Please remind me where I, where I was at. I see you. Keep. Thank you. You are the best coach. So. So I'm thinking the great performances of great classical pieces to me are the ultimate uh, in teamwork. You have so many intricate little pieces. You have an orchestra, pretty big orchestra. If one violin does not play, there is a big difference in, and the performance may suffer. One of my favorite classical pieces, and I know you're going to say, like, what is this? Karl Orff's Carmina Burana. And I know that all of you have heard it because this piece is used in a lot of commercials, a lot of movies. Everybody knows it. it's a very powerful, upbeat piece. Um, and it requires, it has a big orchestra, chorus. And then there's a guy, and I really don't know if you play the cymbals or you just hit him. <laughs> but there he is. He kind of stands right there with the cymbals. And he only hits them during the entire performance. He hits them only like 10, 12 times. It seems like such a small piece. And yet, without it, the performance would totally lose in its power and in its beauty and what it's meant to be. And the reason I'm talking about this, there is a reason. Coach Weller, Chris Weller, Miss Weller, I call her still, my college coach, also Hall of Famer, she had the ability, like a conductor, to bring out the best in us, to teach us about strengths and weaknesses, to make sure that we cover up for each other's weaknesses and we bring out each other's strengths and we play to each other's strengths. She created such a cohesive unit. It was such an incredible team cohesion that it's just something that I never experienced and never was able to duplicate. I looked for it all over the world 
and never was able to find it. And Ms. Waller, I know that everybody here, we have a lot of players here who played with me, who played before me, who played after me. We all agree that, uh, well, Coach Dunn, you are awesome. Pet Summit is incredible. Gino Riyama knows he's incredible. <laughs> but, Ms. Weller, to us, you are the best and you are the greatest. And thank you so much for everything. But wait, you think I'm done? I'm not. That could have been. That could have been a nice ending. That was really good, but no, I'm not done. <laughs> Sorry. Coach Dunn started it, the memo. All right, so I just got to tell you just a little bit, very quickly, about my parents. My mom didn't understand why women were playing sports at all. And yet, when I would come home after a game, before I would even enter, she would be like, how many goals did you score? <laughs> so I am like, Mom, that's for soccer. I actually play basketball. Please don't ask me that. How many goals was, how many baskets did you score? I didn't score any, but I was the best. Oh, you have to come down from that cloud that you're always on. You know, Milic had 32, Dragicevic had 28, and Kalic had 16. I'm like, how did you know that? I just came home after a game. So she was always like that every week. And then my dad, if you knew my dad, you would understand that there's such thing as someone being way too positive. So. He, I didn't want my mom, I didn't want my dad at the games, just wasn't just quite right. And so, but my dad would sneak into the game, so I would see him. So after the games, we would walk home, walk. Guys, don't let your imagination run wild now, picturing like, I mean, some, some black scarf, black dress. We have wagons being pulled by mules <laughs> back in Serbia. You know, we just still walk, we had cars but we actually walk places in Europe. So <laughs> we would be walking home and my dad would start, honey, you were so great, it was incredible. How did you make that move? How did you do that? I haven't even seen anybody on a men's Olympic team be able to do that. How did you do it? And I, of course, love listening to that. I could have let him go. He would never stop, but I have to stop him because I said, but dad, I never got in a game. <laughs> so, but he said, but honey, you were the best during the warm-ups. <laughs> so now, for Ms. Weller, I apologize for giving you some premature gray hairs because to me, I had to show off during warm-ups, so I kept coming up with all kinds of moves. It was too boring to just go one way, so it was so much more interesting to try something that wasn't so simple. So I really apologize for that. And I also want to really add, and this just came to me, I just want to I just want to add that you know how you always say how nice I am and how nice I was and how I never questioned anything didn't talk back well I didn't speak English then <laughs> so, so let me get to thank yous because if I have as many people to thank as Miss Dunn I'll be here another 45 minutes so but thank God no so I definitely want to thank um, all, my, all my teammates who are here and who are here today. Um, without them, I hate cliches, but I got to say, without them, this would not be possible. Obviously, Coach Weller, incredible mentor, incredible influence, and I just hope that in my coaching now, if I do half of what she did for me, players that come through my program will have incredible, rewarding, and successful experience. I want to thank my daughter for being here and her friends. Hi, Brittany, Diane. Hi there. And Tara, the amazing thing about me is not graduating, is having almost perfect, almost, I said, perfect daughter like Deanne. I have no idea how that happened. It had nothing to do with me. And honey, thank you so much. I want to thank my new employer, Georgian Court University. Yeah, Division Two. Great. My new athletic director, Laura Leesman, our assistant athletic director, Chris McKeeben, who is here. Um, also, our, new, our, our commissioner for my new conference where I'm going to be coaching, Dan Mara, who is here. I am honored that you are present, that you decided to come to this. Thank you so much. I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee. Uh, you guys do so much work, and you're dedicated to this and make us feel so special, and you continue to promote this game. 
And I do promise that while I always have honored the past, uh, I do teach young players, young generations to honor the past. And I'm so honored to see the 1976 uh, Olympic team players here. It is wonderful and humbling. And, um, and uh, you guys do so much to make us feel special. And I'm going to promise you that I will do everything possible to continue to grow the game of basketball and to continue to promote the game of basketball. Um, thank you so much. But you think I'm done. I'm not done. <laughs> guys, I do have to do this to you. And I apologize because this is going into cyberspace. And I do have to say just a couple of words to the Serbian basketball players in Serbia. All right. So here it goes, but you don't even know if I'm saying anything. I could be speaking Chinese right now. Za mene je uvek bila velika čast da igram za našu reprezentaciju. Ja želim da se zahvalim svim mojim saigračicama. Ja se vas sećam, vi ste zauvek meni u duši, u srcu, u mojim mislima. Ja želim da poželim svima u reprezentaciji, muškoj, ženskoj, košarkašima, košarkašicama Republike Srbije sve najbolje Želim vam puno sreće u svim takmičenjima. Ako vam ikada nešto zatreba, ja sam tu, možete da mi se javite. Živela Republika Srbija. Thank you. Congratulations and welcome to the hall.